What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my least favorite parts of some of my favorite games. As a channel that reviews a lot of games, and just as a general practice, I think it's a good idea to be critical of the things you enjoy in the hopes that they improve even farther. And that, to me, is a critical part of the improvement of much of anything. So as the title says, and I've already said once, these are actually some of my favorite games. But nonetheless, they have parts that are, quite frankly, a bit underwhelming compared to the rest of the project, or just in general. But with them being my favorite games, as you might not be surprised to learn, they are games that I talk about on the channel pretty regularly. Though I did throw one in at the end specifically because I don't talk about that game a ton. Right before we jump into the rest of this video, probably worth mentioning that there are definitely going to be some spoilers for the the titles on this list, so I will likely put the title of each game in the timestamps so you can skip any of them you're concerned about spoilers for, because it's kind of hard to talk about parts of a video game without spoiling something. But with that said, number one on our list, we have Divinity Original Sin 2, and my least favorite part of this game is actually the third act called The Nameless Isle. Compared to all of the other acts of the game, I just quite frankly find it underwhelming. There are very few quests in comparison to the entire rest of the game, most of the interactions are fairly limited, and it's easily the shortest of all of the acts as well. If anything, it just feels like one long, continuous quest with a sort of puzzle element attached to part of it. And unfortunately, no matter how you handle this particular part of the game, you kind of get railroaded at the end of this act into the direction the game wants you to go anyway way, which kind of undermines all of the choices you made up to this point, and including the Nameless Isle itself. Because the Isle does have some variations, such as how do you get into the Academy, or how do you solve this puzzle, and it's like none of that really matters when you get to the end of the Isle anyway, and the ending of this act kind of invalidates everything you just did. And for these reasons, I find the Nameless Isle to be the weakest part of Divinity Original Sin 2, which is a shame because it does have its cool moments nonetheless. But that brings us to number two on the list, and this is The Enigma in Wrath of the Righteous. Now, I don't think this particular entry will surprise anyone at all. The Enigma is a pretty well-despised portion of that game. In fact, a lot of people probably won't find it to begin with, to be honest. But it is actually the end of Nenio's questline. So if you want to find out everything going on with this strange person that is Nenio, you'll have to complete this quest. In order to even get there throughout the game, you have to find these four masks and then put them on statues in a side location. This will open up a portal to an area called Enigma. Enigma is the puzzle dungeon layer of the demon lord Arish Kagal. And while I have completed Enigma a few times, it's not a good time. It's literally just puzzle after puzzle after puzzle. And I typically avoid this place. There are a few reasons you might want to complete it, because again, end of Ninio's questline. But also, Arish Kagal is a demon lord, which means you can get a Nihendrian crystal from her if you use a midnight arrow in the fight, which is a portion of the secret ending. So there are some reasons you would want to do this. However, I myself and many other people just universally avoid the place because it is uh, not fun. <laughs> the fight with Arish Kagal is pretty cool, though. Now, that brings us to our third entry on the list, and this is the ending to Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Major spoilers for this one, for sure. But I actually love Deadfire. It is a fantastic game in a lot of ways, but probably the biggest place it drops the ball is just the ending sequence to that title. It feels very abrupt. It answers very few questions. If anything, it creates more problems that then the game never really answers with much of the epilogues, and it kind of leaves the entire universe of Eora on this huge cliffhanger about what's going to happen to that world afterwards. And unfortunately, we might never see the answer. But even beyond that, when you look at this ending purely from what you are experiencing, it's basically a text event. You find this mysterious island that everyone's been talking about. You have a couple of fights, both of which are not particularly challenging. And then the big bad does the thing he's been trying to do all game anyway that you were supposed to be trying to stop. It's just very underwhelming in such a disappointing way to leave an otherwise fantastic game. But that brings us to number four on our list, Nosferatu Warrens in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. This is an area of that game that is so bad, the unofficial patch just lets you skip it entirely. 
As part of the main story, you need to find the Nosferatu Warrens, and what this essentially is is a giant dungeon crawl through areas that look exactly the same, only to fight a boss who then turns out to be a regular enemy that you're going to have to kill several more times immediately after the boss fight. And while Bloodlines itself is known for being kind of an incomplete mess that was initially released and then fixed by fans after the fact, I think the Warrens in particular are a really egregious example of exactly that, because that part of the game is truly awful. And like I said, the unofficial patch actually just lets you access a hatch, which skips the thing entirely, which is funny to me because that part of the game is so bad that the unofficial fan patch was like, let's just not do anything with this and just go around it. But nonetheless, otherwise, I actually love Bloodlines. I think, despite being, again, a bit of a cult classic with an insanely buggy launch, it was a game with a lot of cool ideas that never really got the support it should have. And that brings us to our final entry on the list. And this one I threw in here just because I enjoy the game and I want to mix it up a little bit. And that is Skyrim, actually. The part of Skyrim I like the least is actually the Mages Guild. Now, a lot of people have strong opinions about Skyrim one way or the other, but one of the common criticisms you'll see of this particular game is that a lot of its mechanics are a bit shallow, especially in comparison to other Elder Scrolls games. And I think the Mages Guild in particular really hits that home. Because in theory, the Mages Guild, or the College of Winterhold as it's known, To give it its proper name, I'm sure people will be in the comments telling me all about how the Mages Guild is in fact a separate thing, and yes, I am quite aware. But it is the Mages Guild of Skyrim. Semantics. But nonetheless, it's supposed to be this college, which has, like, people studying magic and everything, and what this actually boils down to is about a dozen or so people, only, like, four of which are students. And the plot goes from, you're in magical college, to the world is ending, do something now, over the course of like five missions, and it's ridiculous, the pace is terrible, and in my opinion, it's easily the worst part of that entire game. But nonetheless, guys, there you go, five of my least favorite parts of some of my favorite games. Tell me about some games you love down in the comment section below, and obviously parts of those games that you yourself don't enjoy. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say on this one. And with that said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of all that, truly, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.